heard a story about a man who had just died and gone to heaven. And as he was standing outside of the pearly gates, he was greeted by Simon Peter. And Peter started going through the book of life to see if this guy qualified to get into heaven. And Peter said, you know what, buddy? Um, I'm looking up your records and I'm not finding a lot on you. It's not like you've done anything really bad in your life. But then again, I don't really have any record of anything good you've done in your life. Can you tell me one good thing that you ever did while you were on earth? Because if you can, you're in. So the guy says, well, yeah, as a matter of fact, I can. Uh, there was this one time when I'm driving down the street and I, I see a motorcycle gang around a woman. Her car broken down. They were circling her. They were closing in on her. So I pulled my car over, jumped out, popped the trunk, grabbed a tire iron, ran right into the middle of the group, and I said to them, if you want to get to this girl, you have to go through me first. And then I hit one of them on the head to make my point. Peter said, whoa, that's impressive. When did that happen? The guy said, like, three minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, and he's, like, in heaven. He's... Okay, that joke is so riddled with theological error, I don't really want to go into it, but it's it, just to make a point, and, and the point is this, I have really lame jokes. No, there's another point. That's true, but this is the other point. And that is, one day, before we know it, and in some cases, quite suddenly, we may find ourselves in the presence of God in heaven. You know, sometimes as you're getting older, you know it's approaching, you're thinking about it a lot, but then there are times when there is no warning. You don't know this is going to be your final day, and you're hurtled literally into the presence of God, and there you stand. Well, look, I don't know about you, but when I take a trip, I want to know about where I'm going. The first thing I check is the weather because I want to pack the right clothes. Is it cold? Is it warm? Is it rainy? It seems like whatever I pack, the weather always changes the moment I get there. You know, if it's hot, the moment I get there, a cold snap just came in. If it's cold in the middle of the winter, a heat wave arrives just the moment that I land. And so I seem to always have the wrong clothes. But I like to know the lay of the land. I may talk with someone that's been there before and say, hey, you know, where's a good place to eat when I'm there? Tell me about this place, what to expect. Listen, all of us who have put our faith in Jesus Christ are headed to heaven. So the more we know about it, the better, right? So we need to be prepared. And the reason we need to be prepared is because heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. Jesus said, I have gone to prepare a place for you. You know, a lot of people believe in the afterlife. Uh, actually, the numbers are higher than ever. A recent global survey was conducted asking people about their belief in God and the afterlife. And of the 18,000 people polled across 23 countries, the following was revealed. 51% were convinced there was an afterlife and a God. That's around the world. Now in the United States, belief is even higher. 76% of Americans believe in heaven, and of those, 71% think it's an actual place. Now, belief in the afterlife is not unique to our time. Uh, almost every culture believes that there is something beyond the grave. The Egyptians believe that, of course. Archaeologists discovered a solar boat in one of the tombs of the pharaohs that had died 5,000 years ago, intended for him to use to sail through the heavens into the next life. Ancient Greeks would often place a coin in the mouth of a corpse to pay their fare across the mystic river of death uh, into the land of a mortal life. American Indians would bury a pony in a bow with arrows with a dead warrior so that he could ride into the happy hunting ground. Norsemen would bury a dead hero's horse with him so he could ride proudly into the afterlife. The Romans believed that the righteous would picnic in Elysian fields with their horses grazing nearby. Eskimos of Greenland who died in childhood were customarily buried with their dog who would help guide them through what they believed was the cold wasteland of death. So think about all these views of the afterlife. Horses for Romans and Norsemen and dogs for the Eskimos in the afterlife. 
Notice no cats. Because a cat would not guide you in the afterlife. If a cat even got to heaven, which is highly unlikely, if animals do indeed go to heaven, a cat would abandon you completely. Now all of these views are skewed or outright wrong, but the one thing that they have right is there is life beyond this life.